Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative, and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got a friend online. Her name is, it's two L's, Alana Pratt. Is that right? Alana Banana, yes. Alana Banana Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> is those that they used to tease you in school? Well, I changed it from being teased to don't be a banana, vote for Alana in the grade six student council elections. And ever since, it's been an ally of mine. There you go. It's turning lemons into lemonade. Lemons into or, lemonade. Or bananas into <laughs> <Yes>. smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the world are you in right now? I am in hot Palm Desert, California, but born and raised in cold British Columbia, Canada. So kind of close to Minnesota. I can hear the, it sounds like we have a similar accent, which oh, is really fun. for sakes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do border. We're neighbors. You know, Absolutely. I got seven miles away from Canada, but I haven't stepped across the border yet. So I've not been to Canada. In your whole life? My whole life. I've been to Bali. I've been to Thailand. I've been to Amsterdam and Brazil and Jamaica and Costa Rica. And I haven't been to Canada. Eh? Well, I take off, eh? You should, I recommend you go for a vacation. We are a great people, beautiful country. And it sounds like you like hotter places. So just go in the summertime. I do, but I'm used to the, the cold part. But you guys know how to party. That's for sure. I used Thank to do you. a karate tournaments up in Duluth, which is on Lake Superior, and the, the Canadians used to come down to compete, and they're crazy. <laughs> Thank you. We are proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you married and got kids? I am not married, but I do have a 17-year-old boy, Gabriel, who is 6'4", my Lord. I don't know if he's going to keep growing, but yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> no, I've got two divorces under my belt and no, no current partner. That happens. You know, I waited till I was 53 to even get married. Oh, well, look at that. That probably would have been a good idea. However, I'm so grateful for all the lessons that I've learned. It's actually what turned me into an intimacy expert because I learned divorce number one. I was still back in damsel in distress energy, you yeah. know, looking to be saved. Yep. Second marriage, I moved over into, you know, more of a masculine. I got this. It's no Disneyland. You know, I'm going to make this happen. And I had a very closed heart. Mom was dying at the time. I just thought a man and a baby would make me feel better. So, you know, I, I grew a lot. Uh, I have had to forgive myself, forgive them. But it's part of this intimacy work that I do. The little Alana inside my heart who made those two decisions. Initially, I was so embarrassed by her like humiliated that here I am this cum laude grad of Columbia University, this smart chick, seven, you know, six books and all the rest of it. And I couldn't let anybody know that I was insecure, that I made all these mistakes, that I was needy, right? So as I gained this, this forgiveness on the inside and came home to little Alana, and what I mean by coming home is I'm not going inside to love my inner child so that she changes, so that we look good, so that we could be perfect. There's no in order to. Like I literally am going inside willing to sit with her for eternity, if that's how long it takes. And just let her know I love her unconditionally. I was just going to say the word unconditionally. Yeah, you're so right. Conditions will get you in trouble. Yeah, Mark. They change. So right. <laughs> yep, I remember I had a relationship that I got into and it was one of those love-hate relationships and I got uh -huh. out of it. And then later I went onto my computer and I saw this little short story that I'd written up. Yeah. And I basically manifested that woman because it was exactly what the story was about. So in my next attempt, I yeah. visualized what I wanted and that's what I got now. So and there, well, was, there, you go. there, there was conditions, but I was patient enough to wait until those conditions came along and mm. the conditions were flexible. You know, mm. basically the conditions were no smoking, no drinking, no drugs, no kids, no tattoos, no piercings. Oh, okay. She has a kid, she got pierced ears, and she drinks wine. So <laughs> <laughs> it all works out. <laughs> it all works out. You know, it's beautiful that you bring in visualization. I've been on this path for about 20 years, learning from different you know, uh, teachers and, and, and methodologies and, and philosophies, et cetera. And the most recent one I've learned is more of a science-based, that in order for us to create, actually in order for us to uh, integrate a wound, we can't just talk about it on the therapist's couch. 
We can't just visualize only a new reality. We can't just have a good cry. We can't just do the tapping. What I've been learning is that when you integrate all four elements with the image, the thought, the emotion, and the body sensation, all four elements, that is how we can uh, process, integrate, heal a trauma. And it's also how we can create a new reality. Mm -hmm. So I imagine if you attracted somebody who's a really great fit, yes, you visioned, yes, you wrote it down, but I imagine you probably also felt the emotion all the way through your body. Totally. As well. totally. yeah. that's what you that's what you got to do emotions yeah. are pretty powerful things all the different yeah. senses and stuff yeah well congratulations and then you can manifest and it's not that tough anymore well that's the <laughs> magic the, the co-creation with the universe really starts to happen and we're not all trying to control it on our own we can surrender let go and, and dance well, i think mystery. that's why it's important to, to have like my wife is a coach she's a shaman and she does coaching on dreams and Lovely. underworld and all that kind of stuff Love and I think it's important to have someone like yourself, a different point of view to yeah. kind of shine some light on something because a person might be going, this is what I want and this is why I want it. And it's from their precognitive yeah. beliefs that it, that may not be realistic or it may not be what you really, really want. Right. Yeah, it's so true. There's such a different awareness when you just go into the, 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 the beliefs in the mind as opposed to like the thinking as opposed to dropping into that like knowing in your heart, that uh-huh, uh-uh, that real instinctual arising of truth. Um, and it takes practice and it takes uh, whatever healing, what does Rumi say? Peeling away the layers to the, I'm butchering poor Rumi, sorry about that Rumi, but you know the one where you, it's not about getting love, it's about uh, removing the blocks to it. Yeah, so kind of like the, uh, the sculpture inside of the, the marble is yeah, chip the away. The, yeah. Exactly, yeah, so that, being being willing to do the work to hear your own knowing inside and be uh, the experience for me is well now i can trust myself i don't have to look for safety on the outside i can rest in it on the inside yeah and if you get into that um non-stressed place i think things are delivered much more divinely and uh, again not pre premeditated if you will <laughs> yeah that's also a great place you get it you get it <laughs> magic man <laughs> Magic Brad, that's what I go by. Some people call me Magic Mike and I go, I can't dance. <laughs> you can always learn. I'm sure your wife would love it. <laughs> I don't want to be related to Magic Mike. <laughs> uh, when you do your coaching, do you do primarily like via Zoom like this or do you do one-on-one well, -on -one courses? These days, yeah, well, these days, days it's yeah. all... Yeah, it's all via Zoom. So yeah, I do private sessions via Zoom. I do group calls every single week via Zoom. Um, in the past, and I will again, I do retreats. And I have a wonderful digital program for her, for him, and for couples. So I put all the work that I've done and condensed it into this little baby drips three times a week that come out over a year. Um, and I'm even launching a dating app in uh, the first week of July. So a lot of different ways to serve people. So do, do I, I'm in the event industry, so I'm always curious about the events and the retreats. Where do you do the retreats? Mm, I normally will rent a very, very large, beautiful home um, because intimacy is what we're about with what I'm teaching. And so we, we stay in, we've gone to Canada, uh, the desert where I am right now, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, where else have we gone? So we haven't done anything international like the beautiful places you spoke of, like Costa Rica, Bali, et cetera. Um, it's more just being able to fly in someplace local. But sure. it's so wonderful because you get to know somebody very differently when it's, I don't know, more structured. You show up at the hotel, you go back to your room, as opposed to they just left the kitchen messy or, they, or they're up at 4 a.m. and I'm still sleeping. Like, you know, you really get triggered in a whole other way when you're under the same roof, creating meals together, doing deep dyad processes together, going out in nature together. Well, I find we get exponential results because we get triggered and then we lean into it and we see the gift in it. We process what's in the way of it and the family and the connection and the tribe and the trust and the vulnerability and intimacy that happens as well is, is extraordinary with those circumstances. And of course it keeps it to a smallish amount, you know, no more than, you know, 15, 20 people. And yet I love it. I love it. So um, I'm sure you get those situations and I'm always fascinated by them where there's this, this, this stuff going on. Like my mother used to do this and then all of a sudden they, you, you peel the onion back and you realize that it's such a minuscule little situation that you've been holding on to since childhood that you've been replaying and you can kind of get rid of that 
little teeny yeah. thing it was really no big deal anyways well it's funny you say that because i my point of view is it was a really big thing to them you time, know yeah. my point of view sure it's a tiny thing but to them i always make sure i honor and respect the, the, the part in my experience that's been wounded by what feels like larger than life issue. If I just tell them, oh, it's just little, I'm not honoring their experience. Yeah. If I first honor it and then I let them through the process go, oh, as you yeah, just that's said, exact, that's exactly what I meant. Cause yeah. First, okay. Very good. Yeah. That, oh my God, that's, that's, that, that they didn't even mean it that way. I just took it that way. I did my best as a little five-year-old. I have compassion for myself, forgiveness for them. And then whew, pure choice again. And off, off we go. Yeah. It's wonderful to, to sit with somebody through that breakthrough. It's, um, it's a privilege to be so deeply connected with people when it's like the darkest shadows to the brightest lights. Yeah. And then like there's situations sometimes where someone, uh, like say they've got, they've got children and then they're going to get in a new relationship. And now there's yeah. that, you're not my dad kind of thing. And being yeah. able to figure out how that works. And because you're working with multiple people, you may have seen that situation before, even oh, if that sure. might not be your situation. So you can shed that light on, on that situation and people can go, aha, I can relate to that. Yeah, there. I think one of the reasons, well, at least the people that are attracted to me is I'm, I'm far from perfect. I'm a hot mess on a regular basis, but where I'm also masterful, I also own that. I own my genius. So they feel safe to know, oh my God, she's not better than me, but she knows what she's doing over here, but she's not going to judge me that I'm a hot mess too. And I don't want anyone to know. So there's a real safety and security to me just to walk my talk. And I also have coaches. I think it's out of integrity to be a coach if you don't have someone seeing your own blind spots. So I share, you know, what comes up in my life and how I get through that. So they're like, okay, we can all be vulnerable here together and find the strength in our heart splayed wide open vulnerability rather than see that as a, as a weakness. It's yeah. important to have a third party, if you will, you know, you got yourself and then you got your beliefs and then you got a third party that can kind of get in between like yourself. Yeah. And I think it's really important. And sometimes people look at that and go, Oh yeah, but that's so expensive. If they could realize how expensive it is to not have any guidance. Oh, thank you. That. Oh, it is so true. And to me, money is a tool. Money is energy and it's there to support ourselves. And so if I want higher, a higher life experience, who would I want to invest in? Me. I'm the one creating the whole thing, physically, mentally, spiritually, vocationally, financially, socially, family, romantically, sexually, like every area of my life. Who's the, who's the core uh, choice maker? Me. So I want to invest in me. I want to make sure I nurture myself monetarily with coaches, uh, morning practices, evening practices, really reflecting. It, it, are the people in my life a contribution and making those different choices? So I, I don't think there'll ever be a day where I'm not coaching and being coached. I think that's why we're all on the planet together to help each other. And what I find is when I'm grateful for the money and, and I treat myself well, and I thank others by paying them for their services, the flow of money, at least in my life, just continues to expand. I, I make a difference to me. I honor me and I honor others and the flow just keeps growing. You said flow, yeah. that, that's why it's called currency because that's what it's, ah, it's flowing through. You know? The mon yeah. thing is with money is you can always get more of it. With time, once it's gone, it's gone. It's thank exhausted. You. Right. So, yes. So speaking of money, I'm sure you've got some free things that people can get to get to know who you are and things, maybe some kind of little gift or you, you got, you said you got books, right? Oh, I have six books. Yeah. Maybe so you can find on, those uh, on Amazon or on my Amazon. website. Yeah. Um, and also right on my website, there's an intimacy blind spot assessment. And I'm really proud of this. I have different, you know, free trainings as well, but this one's my favorite because people are clever. People do the work. People show up, they listen to podcasts like this. And if we could figure it out ourselves, we would change it. But I and others, you know, it's the blind spots that really irk us. And then once we, oh, we discover the blind spots, sometimes then we judge ourselves that we didn't figure it out before. And then we're even in a worse pickle. So this beautiful complimentary intimacy blind spot assessment is a way to show you, oh, I thought it was this was the problem. Oh, this is actually what's going on. And then it gives you tools to move forward, to take your power back. So uh, I'd love everyone to go to my site, alanapratt.com, my name, uh, two L's, two T's. So, um, so I could give that gift to you to see what you might not have ever seen before. 
so you can create a life that's beyond where you are right now. I like the title of that, the, the intimacy blind spot assessment. Yeah, that's, just that's it. what it's it is. Like the, it's the, a blind spot. The things you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, cool. so I'm very so proud of that. A-L-L-A-N-A-P-R-A-T-T dot com. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. You have a nice little voice there as you say it. Yeah. And of course, there's my YouTube channel and I have a podcast as well, Intimate Conversations. So there's great interviews there as well. Lots of free resources for people. I will connect on your social medias and then I will beam this up to the universe and let the, oh, let the internet do its you. thing. Well, Thank Alana, you. I don't like to take these things too long because people have that commodity of time and they've got things they've got to do, I'm sure, so they can get out and do them. But I appreciate you taking the time today and I will Thank get this off to you within an hour or so. Sounds phenomenal. Have a beautiful day. And thank you for your time and for spreading my message with the world. All my love okay. to you. Thank you.